Hi right, guys, welcome back to the Department of Filtration. Back today with another oil filter conspiracy. We're going to try and work out what's going on. So we're going to be looking at three oil filters today. With the part number, the John Deere OEM filters. AM125424. Which is your standard sort of Briggs and Stratton, Kawasaki, Kohler, ride on mower oil filter. I've got three filters here. One, one's a bit mangled, but you can still see that it's the same number. That one there. And we have got three filters which are very different on the inside so i'm not going to be reviewing these today i'm just going to be cutting them open and seeing what the differences actually are why they might be different but be the same thing so i'll go ahead and get these three cut open so we can have a look at it all right guys we got these three cut open we'll get to why i believe they might be different at the end of the video we'll have a look and see how different they really are so once again two part numbers the same there the same down there yeah, obviously that one looks a bit different these ones are looking similar but even in the stick you can see uh, the one on the left is a bit more bold, a bit bigger. And what's the date code? That's a. Uh, I mean. A bit hard to. Uh, 0412, I'm assuming. 0414, I don't know whether that's a year or not. This one doesn't appear to have one. So, we get to comparing them on the base plates. We got one with the two layers. The runners are in the outside and then the sheet metal on the top. And then these two are quite similar. That one's actually got one hole that's bigger than all the others. I'm going to measure that. So these all the other holes. Around. Just read that. 5.5. .5. And then this big hole here. Is coming in at. 8.2 so it's quite a bit bigger but anyway and then this one's got the similar sort of setup probably a few more a bit more oil flow there and in terms of gaskets they've all just got rubber gaskets that one's pretty thick those two are stuck in there real well but uh they're all used filters, so they can get quite hard. But that one looks like it might possibly be glued in. It's sort of got a bit of glue holding it in, but they're sort of fairly thick threads. And it's got four. 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 That one's got an upwards facing one, and these ones are both downwards facing. So that's the base plates. Now we'll get on to the elements and the way the rest of them are. So we'll look at bypass valves first. 
Yeah, well, and there, this is since it's got this type of base plate, it's got the valve that sort of sits over them there. And these ones with the more traditional base plate have got the smaller ones which fit quite nicely. That one's quite nice actually. And that one, pretty good too. Not quite as good as fit as the one on the middle. Now in terms of elements, we've got I'll line them all up for thickness. You can see quite clearly there that the middle one has got the most in height. This one's got the most pleats and that one's most definitely got the least amount of media in it. I'm not going to cut it out on these because it just makes a mess and you can clearly see what one's got what there. They've all got metal end caps. This one over here on the left's got a plastic core. You know, see that down in there, the plastic core. This one here has got holes. Yep. And that one there has got a lot more smaller fine holes in it. Now on the bottom as well, uh, we've got our springs and valves. So these are all different again. The middle one is a traditional, it's got a nice little rubber coated Oh, it's doing must be bright on the camera. Uh bypass valve there with a little coil spring that fits into that gap nicely. So that's quite nice there. This one on here is a traditional plastic core with your leaf spring and your plate bypass valve which sits in there once again doesn't seal properly there's no surface between the spring and the gasket to actually seal that holds that up in there and this one has got quite an interesting design we have the bypass valve built into the leaf spring itself so it's got these holes in the bottom of the element that sits in there snug it's actually designed along with this particular type of valve that when that pressure is too high uh, the oil actually creeps up down between these two and opens up a little bit and actually goes down into those valves so I'm not quite sure how well that actually works Obviously, it's quite a safe space saving thing, but given that this can the same size, it's got a coil spring and a traditional coil spring loaded bypass valve. I'm not quite sure why you would do that, but that's what's there. And in terms of the tins, we got that one there. Quite thin with the thickness of yep, 0.3. It's quite a thin can. Once it is a lawnmower filter, so that gonna be a bit thin. The middle one here. About 0.3.4, so a little bit thicker. And then the end one here feels the same as the right hand side. Oh, but it's, yeah, it's about 0.3. So we've got three filters here, and I'll go 
Ada again showing you the part numbers. AM one two five four two four. The C there is irrelevant. Uh, another one with the same. Another one with the same. All got John Deere on them. Now, why would there be three completely different filters, all with the same part number from the same manufacturer? Now, I'm not 100% certain on that, but I've got an interesting guess. So this one here on the right is a service is a service part filter. So if you walked into a dealership and asked for this, this is what you would get. You know, in Australia they're about twelve dollars. And for a lawnmower that's not under very high pressure or really doing a whole lot of work uh, with a small engine. This is going to do the job just fine. I wouldn't really worry about the fact that it's plastic and has a loose spring. But that's the service part. Now, it's good. Uh, one thing you've got to know when we're looking at these is that John Deere make a few different lawnmowers and they have engines on them from different manufacturers. So this is actually a factory fit oil filter off a lawnmower with a Kawasaki engine on it. The internal sort of looks similar, most similar to this one. It's got some very interesting features. And then this one here is actually the factory fit oil filter off a John Deere lawnmower with a Briggs and Stratton engine. So my guess is this is a service part comes from the factory that John Deere makes and puts their label on. And then these ones are actually the ones that probably come from the engine manufacturers themselves. And they just get a John Deere label on them so everything uh, looks the part. And this is actually what Kawasaki OEM filter and this is a Briggs and Stratton OEM filter. It will be interesting to see what those actual name brand OEM filters look like for those particular engines. But if you're looking at your you got a new John Deere mower and you're looking at your old filter that was on there and the new one you got to put on there and they look different they probably actually are. And there's three different filters here with the same number. They're completely different. If I had to pick one as my favourite, it would certainly be the Briggs and Stratton one. That's a very good filter compared to the others. It's a bit of a shame that this is not what the service part is and then we got this rubbish. But uh, There you have it. we got three... Completely different oil filters from the same manufacturer with the same part number all around the same time period.